Should we buy or sell Ford Motor Company? First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and subscribing. So I have a theme under the other themes called vehicles. 11% from the low, beating the S&P 500, but minus 44% away from the 52-week highs. So we find Ford Motor here, they make cars, um, no big shock there, 3% from the low, minus 57% away from the highs. Uh, Elon Musk is uh, also a car uh, manufacturer or a car entrepreneur, and he is being a bit of a rascal. The funny thing uh, is that if you uh, do some research into Henry Ford, you will see that he was um, pretty similar. Uh, he was actually even more controversial uh, than Elon Musk in his time. So definitively learn, learn about Henry Ford, a very, a lot of stuff that will surprise you. Anyway, here is a Ford's website, a very cool image, I must say, this is great marketing. Um, introducing Alexa built-in, so some kind of partnership here with Amazon. Yeah, a very nice website, um, cool images. So yeah, uh, it's a very famous uh, car company. Yeah, okay, so let's just jump into the charts here. So let's go a bit further back. So this here is um, in 1997. So way back, the 200 week moving average was a big deal. It becomes resistance and then we have a bear market. And you can see here that is, it was a very surgical resistance level, very good for the bears uh, to initiate short uh, positions. It becomes a support, support and uh, we get a rally. And guess what? We are now uh, testing that historically, way back, important moving average as a potential support level. So the primary assumption, given that it also was surgical resistance relatively recently, here, one and the two and the three, this is, this is obviously a very big deal level. Zooming in, I mean, this is very clean. So we have a very clean support level and clean support levels are great because then you know where to put your stops. Looking at the daily data points, potentially we have some horizontal support here, uh, but we are below all moving averages. Now looking at, you know, RSI, except the C19 lockdown and the worst part here of the of 2005 actually. So, the, so it actually um, imploded um, during that period. Anyway, this RSI level and PBO level and also MACD level has a tendency to be bought. Looking at the daily data points, we have a similar message. We are currently rather low. That does not mean that it is impossible for the bears to push it further down. It means that the odds of them doing it right here and right now is reduced. Similar to how when you have an extreme rally, it is possible for the bulls to push it even higher. It is simply that the odds are not that good anymore. So I give this one a 7 on the technicals, but this 7 is completely contingent on 200 weekly moving average support. If we were to lose it, then we don't have a seven here anymore. Let's look at seasonality. So to the right here, we have the average over the last 10, seven and five years. In green over the last five years, uh, we usually see some um, overall bullish uh, seasonality leading into mid-August. In blue, over the last seven years, it is a bit messy, but overall it is bullish, similar into August. Uh, in red, so let's find a way to sort of measure that, like that. 
Yeah, in red, uh, over the last 10 years, it is a bit more problematic for the bulls. To the left, over the last 5 years, June closes higher 60% of the time, but on average, we do get a bit of a loss. July, August, and September are bad. The last 10 years, like that. Yeah, June closes higher 50% of the time, but on average, there is a loss. So the seasonality, yeah, so let's go to the last 20 years. June is 50-50, on average there is a loss. July closes higher 42% of the time, with an average 1.7% gain. So looking at the average uh, seasonality going forward, we usually, especially over the last 5 and 7 years, see some gains. But it's it's messy, so I will I will only give the bulls a one here on uh, seasonality. Let's look at fundamentals. So we have a number three hold, a value. So it doesn't get better than a value. So if you are a value investor, investor, this is a buy. D growth, B momentum, VGM of A, industry rank bottom thirty five percent, industry automotive dosmetic. Yeah, dividend is is very juicy, three point fifty six percent. Market cap forty five billion US dollars. What are the insiders doing? They are well. We have one sell, but buy, buy, buy. So throughout May, we had far more buying than uh, selling. So that is uh, bullish. Looking at consensus estimates. Then we find that there is a whopping number of uh, yeah, 24 analysts covering the stock, 62% uh, price target on average. The biggest uh, upward target is 185% above, and the lowest price target is 5% above. I think I will give the bulls a 5 here on fundamentals. This is uh, good stuff. Looking at correlations long term, 88% with S&P 500, 84% with the car ETF, 70% with the gasoline, and minus 11% here with the dollar index, daily data points, 86% S&P 500, then we get 89% with the car's ETF, Minus 87% actually with gasoline futures, so that's interesting. And then we get uh, minus 88% here with the dollar index. Uh, so let's uh, quickly have a bit of a look at... Um, yeah, I think we should look at, at cars. Like So here is the ETF weekly data points. MACD is uh, at a level that has resulted in um, lows uh, before. RSI is close uh, to a historically very viable level, similar here on uh, some of the PPOs. But we, we are sort of hovering in mid-air. Uh, we don't have any horizontal support at the moment. Uh, potentially we could get some horizontal support from this one, but we still are a bit above it. Moving averages are also not helping us out. Uh, the 200 week in red is still quite some distance uh, below us. So how much? Well, oh, approaching 5%. Looking at the daily data points. Yeah, it's uh, we don't have those screaming low RSI or PPO levels, but we have a low-ish. As of late, this ETF has formed these uh, small, relatively tradable time cycles, uh, suggesting there's a, there's a bit of a rising phase now uh, around uh, the corner. Uh, we do have a massive rounding top uh, pattern, but you know, rounding tops, they are, they look like this, but they are formed, you know, like this, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay, I see there was a bit of a pause there. Okay, anyway. Uh, here is the relationship between Ford and the car ETF. Interesting pattern. This looks a whole lot like, uh, let me just draw it in. 
we have a shoulder and we have a big brainy head and potentially this here is the right shoulder that is potentially bullish so that's um definitively something to have on our radar because there's been many periods where FOD has outperformed uh, the CARS ETF. And we are also now on the low end, though not screaming by low end of RSI. Now let's look at the daily data points to get you know, that uh, all important seasonality. So we don't really have that much data over the last 10 years. Yeah, over the last five years here in uh, in green, yeah, Ford does have a tendency to to underperform, and also over the last the last seven years in blue, yeah, we get something similar. So let's compare the cars ETF with the S and P five hundred. So the, you can see that this is. It's sort of yeah, inverse head and shoulder-ish, but the um, the right shoulder is significantly below the left, so it sort of is a broken inverse head and shoulders. So yeah, we basically have a continuation here of the downtrend. If we go to the daily data points and look at the seasonality, yeah, basically over the last seven years here, it is uh, bearish. Uh, over the last five years in green, it is more bullish than bearish. I think I will give the bulls a very modest one here on relative uh, performance. It looks interesting, but uh, it's a bit messy as well. And we do end up with an average score of 3.5. The absolute key line in the sand is the 200 weekly moving average support in red. So yeah, I see we have some time left. So let's just quickly look at Tesla. Yeah, so Tesla seen a massive sell off, but we are in um, a horizontal support ish zone. Um, so it's in it's interesting and uh, not the screaming buy, but um, uh, it looks more interesting from a bullish speculative perspective than bearish. Looking at the daily data points. Yeah, uh, we are seeing some tendencies here. Some initial indications that the bears might relax a little bit. Uh, looking at you know, the RSI here long term. Very often these levels form lows, but during the 2019 sell-off and also the sell-off here in 2016, we saw significantly lower uh, levels on you know these overbought, oversold uh, indicators. Let's look a bit at NEO. So NEO, uh, a bit of a controversial company. Uh, we do have a MACD buy signal here. So while uh, the stock market has been selling uh, off. Uh, NEO formed a low here in um, early May. So there's been chaos in the Nasdaq and a bunch of other stuff. But from this low here to this recent high, that is 75%. Uh, substantially beating uh, Tesla and Ford and uh, the Nasdaq. So just because, you know, a stock is... Um, know, inundated with, you know, bad news and all kinds of chaos, that doesn't mean that it's not tradable, you know, from a bullish perspective. Uh, many stocks, you know, that went to zero throughout, you know, that downtrend, they had really spectacular counter trend rallies. And that's the funny thing about how percentages work. And that is that from a very low level, and just the mean reversion can very quickly become, you know, double digit uh, gains. But whatever you do, of course, you want to use stops. 